Hey y'all. Uh, I've got a lot on my mind and I'm going to try and speak from the heart about Robert Kennedy Jr. and his campaign and some of the things I've been thinking about and feeling today. So first thing is that um, I think it's actually really good that he's not on the ballot because the process of him getting on the ballot is a huge publicity stunt for him. So what I mean by that is he gets to prove state by state that he's got the support necessary to win an election. And in the, like it's like kind of like, it's like, um, it looks like an obstacle, but it's actually like a step towards where he needs to go. So it's like a rock in his way, but he needs to climb it so he can get to the next place. Uh, yeah, so that's how I view that whole process. So it's actually kind of like, <laughs> I guess I would call it like the enemy is just kind of fumbling because that's what they do. That's how they know how to act. And that's how they're, how they're programmed to act. Honestly, it's a very like basic level. And Robert Kennedy and his team um, are rising to the occasion. And so it's kind of a beautiful thing to see all these press releases coming out where, oh, you know, he's on the ballot in California and on the ballot in this state or that state. And it's so, um, so awesome when that happens. I think it's really beautiful how this is happening and unfolding. So that's a blessing in disguise. Another thing that's been I've been thinking about lately is that Secret Service protection. I mean, his uncle. um, was president and had secret service protection when he was killed. So, uh, not that that's not to say that they're a bad or corrupt organization, but just, you know, they're human and, um, maybe, maybe not having them is in some way a blessing as well. Um, it's that one's harder for me to see, but it also just speaks to the level of a need for change. Um, the fact that he's the only person, you know, who, who's been denied it pretty much ever uh, since since it's been a thing, since his uncle was killed, or since his dad was killed actually running like in the presidential nomination. So that's when they started assigning Secret Service protection to all the candidates who reached a certain threshold and he's way past that threshold and they're denying it to him, which is just um, really an obscene gesture. And it's it speaks to the level of, I don't know, corruption and insanity that we're dealing with in our government. And, uh, yeah, I wanted to speak a little bit more about some other things about, um, what, what concerns that I have. Um, I'm basically concerned at this point about, uh, voter tallying. Uh, I think that that's like the step in which historically there's been a lot of, uh, action, I would say, in, our, in my lifetime. I mean, it started with the, um, I think, the Gore-Bush election in 2000 in Florida, and um, there was, like, clear nepotism and corruption, and, and um, the fact that the Democratic Party didn't, like, fight it really hard, just... I mean, what it communicated to me as a voter was that they didn't have a backbone. There, there was no spine there. And, you know, at the time I was pretty democratic leaning and I was like, well, say what you want about the Republicans, but at least, you know, like they're going to get their guns <laughs> if, if something, if, if they feel like their constitutional rights are being denied. And, and it was sort of sad to me that uh, people weren't out in the streets. The Democrats weren't out in the streets, like protesting their lost election um, that had basically been stolen from them, according to like the rules of procedure that we've all like agreed to not like at least that's what they, that's what's being told to us is is the way that things are being done and like there was just hypocrisy even in that so i mean there's that there's also um i'm not saying there was tampering with this but like when trump won over hillary the first time i was shocked i did not think that the powers that be would allow him to win he was just too much of an outsider and um too much of like a unpredictable, uncontrollable element at the time anyways. And 
I really thought they would never let it happen. And to be honest, I'm not a big Trump fan. I don't really like him, but I was relieved when he won the first time. The reason being, um, I thought Hillary would take us to war immediately. I thought she was just saber rattling to go into Libya, among other things. And I think there was like a list of countries that they were just getting ready to go into. And she was just saying all the things to kind of stoke the fires in that direction. So I felt relief. Um, uh, but you know, the kind of, the kind of stuff I was hearing from people who liked him, like just was kind of racist and bigoted and misogynistic. And that was really like the whole problem with his entire presidency. Uh, at least to me, I mean, other than running up the debt, 8 trillion, but, um, yeah, it just was not. And, you know, part of that was a pandemic that was out of his control. But uh, at the same time, like it's a, it's not a great track record, but that's what he did with those businesses, you know, is he like, he would do this like bankruptcy games. So it doesn't surprise me that he's trying to run the, he tried to run the country like a business and ran it the same way he ran his businesses, which is to like play money management games. And um, unfortunately, I think we're the loser in that. Um, but the other thing that I didn't really really struck me the wrong way and a lot of people the wrong way about Trump was just his lack of ability to be a figurehead and to, I mean, I guess it appealed to some people that he's always being real, you know, he's, but like these little offhanded remarks, they're just not becoming of a leader. Uh, and I guess that's all I want to say about it. So I think for that reason, he's unsuitable because he appealed to I don't know, certain divisive elements socially. And and that caused some problems with social cohesion in the country. And that's another reason I don't want him to be in there again. Not that, I mean, and then there was like the feeling of that, like after that, it's like, oh, like at least among Democrats, like, oh, anyone but Trump, anyone but that guy, you know, like just put a dead body in there. We don't care. Well, <laughs> we got what we wanted. Uh, there is basically a shell of a human who is basically on puppet strings uh, running the country. And it's just a shame um, to see that. It really, I mean, his family is also corrupt. Um, that's been very obvious as certain things have unfolded with his son and his involvement in facilitating certain um, underhanded deals and like in ukraine specifically and yeah it's just a real it's been a real shit show and um yeah i guess those are the things i wanted to say about these candidates that have come up most recently but also within the um within these elections it's sort of like my worry is that yeah things won't be counted fairly and that, you know, if our, when RFK wins, um, maybe they'll try to invalidate it in some way. And they being the corrupt power establishment that wants to stay in control of things and doesn't want him to drastically change the way that they're doing business. So, uh, yeah, when he shows up, it's really going to be cleaning house and people who are set in their ways and taking advantage of others in these power positions uh, really don't want that. And that's why, you know, his name is not mentioned when polls are taken um, and then the, published in the New York Times, things of that nature. So it's just really, um, yeah, I just wanted to say these things. This is what I've been thinking about. Um, I'm really excited and grateful that he's running. Um, it just it's such a beautiful moment for our country to have a candidate like this who cares about nature and living things and love and is coming from a place of practical experience uh, defending those things and wants to make make life better for all Americans. I mean, it's like he just wants paradise on earth. He wants to do the Camelot thing and I'm all for it. So... 
Yeah, I don't really have much more than that to say. I uh, just wanted to speak from the heart um, about my feelings right now with, with RFK. And I'm just really pleased with how things are going. And I want to make a final note of encouragement to people who support him. Uh, I was speaking with a, a fellow RFK supporter uh, just earlier today. And there's pretty much no doubt in my mind and in my heart that he's going to be the next president. And I'm just really excited for that. And he said that basically me keep sending out these messages and telling him this and doing my channel and stuff gives him hope because he sort of finds himself wavering, you know, and um, I guess when you waver in your faith or your belief, it sort of inhibits your ability to act, to bring those things about, and it slows down the manifestation process. And so at least that's my understanding. So for me, um, right now we have a unique opportunity and I'm just here to make the most of it. And I'm here to uh, speak light into this movement uh, to speak honestly from my own perspective about what my thoughts and feelings are and to invite others maybe who don't know about RFK to just go listen to him. A lot of people who have a problem with RFK have never heard him speak and it's mostly the older generation, um, baby boomers, I mean his own peers basically like people age of my mom and dad in their 70s, you know, late 60s, etc. And they just, uh, they're caught in the news cycle. And the, the news and the mass media are really just a mouthpiece for the status quo. And they are going to resist the change that he represents. And they are resisting it by denying him coverage, by trying to keep him off the debate stages. Um, basically, every underhanded trick that they know they are employing in order to attempt to stop this from happening, but they can't. I mean, that's evidenced by the attempt to keep him off the ballot in, in all 50 states. Like, it's not going to happen. He's going to be on the ballot in all 50 states. And it's just basically the time has come. So, yeah, let's just uh, keep educating ourselves and each other and sharing. I, let's invite us all to do that. Um, he basically said that anyone can do what I'm doing, which is totally true. I just have a cell phone. I'm holding it in my hand and I'm recording myself. And, you know, uh, we all have our own unique perspective and medicine for one another. And it's important for us to show up as ourselves authentically and speak our truth because that allows, like the truth is what's going to resonate so maybe I won't resonate with the message that someone else says, but if it's their truth, that truth is going to resonate and cause my truth to start to activate. So, you know, that's some quantum stuff. Uh, I went maybe a little longer, but I felt it was important to talk about uh, the mass media and how this is counteracting it <laughs> and how you can counteract it. So, yeah, just... Um, as you feel called to, don't be shy. I invite you to come into this space and into your social medias and just talk about what your real thoughts and feelings are. I mean, if you really like RFK and what he represents, I, I think that one of the things we can offer is the same honesty that he's been offering to us. So, you know, sometimes I hold back from talking about my political opinions because of, you know, maybe it's going to be some blowback or what I really think about, um, I don't know. Joe Biden or Trump or any of these things, because I don't want to offend anyone. I mean, I'm from Minnesota. We do our best not to offend anyone. But um, the importance of the truth in this moment, like supersedes um, any kind of personal social need that, that might be at stake, whether it is or not. And so I guess my choice is to just speak my truth. And I invite everyone to do the same. Um, you know, we might arrive at the truth together then if we all uh, take a step in that direction. So yeah, thanks for making it this far. And, um, yeah, I'm going to be back on here a little bit more than I have been. Uh, so thank you for listening. Uh, take care.